the manifesto got sent to our small town newspaper. I am an agent of darkness, a destroyer of worlds. Global warming? I am the match that lights the greenhouse gases. Mass shootings? Assault rifle discharging in different bullets? I am the finger on the trigger. A disease-ridden whore with a slit throat, left to fester in a back alley dumpster. I am the microbe on a knife's edge. The manifesto went on like that for twenty pages or more. Gruesome effects, followed by meticulously described causes. The author fancied him or herself as a perpetrator of chaos, responsible for every bad thing that ever happened in the world. The Unabomber Ted Kaczynski had a manifesto titled Industrial Society and its Future, which wasn't so different in terms of the intent. Our editor-in-chief, Thomas Baxter, a smug old-school journalist with a tough love approach to mentorship, thought this new manifesto was a poorly written piece of shit. He published it in a gist, along with a personal letter from the editor. The letter consisted of one acronym, the abbreviation for too long didn't read. We found Thomas's charred corpse near the loading dock behind our office building. The smoldering remains of industrial-sized staples were tacked into what remained of his skin. Shreds of the paper that hadn't incinerated burned around the edges revealed what had been stapled to him before he'd been burned alive. of halitosis had been cured of her ailment almost immediately. She opened the door to the stairwell. The back draft on the other side burst out like a clawed hand straight from hell, ripping into her body and rendering it molten in a split second. Andy Stevenson, who I remembered told me once that he was scared of fire, got a running head start at a window near his desk jumped out and splattered on the pavement sixty feet below. Gilbert Mitchell, a dinosaur six months away from his retirement, grabbed one of the water jugs from its cooler near Thomas Baxter's burning office. He pried off the top and splashed water on the grasping flames, each little handful of it sizzling away pathetically before the fire crawled up his legs and burnt off his pants and his dick and a carpet of white hair on his chest. I sat in the chair at my desk and watched my colleagues burn alive. Their screams swallowed along with what little oxygen was left in the room. I accepted my death, took a sip of coffee, practiced my 478 breathing, a gift from my therapist. As the hair on my skin began to curl, I heard a hissing voice. Your pen is my sword. I opened my eyes. I'd always closed them when doing the old 478. Standing in front of me was the author of the manifesto. Not a man, not a woman. A monster. During one of the many tabletop board game sessions I'd had over the years with my friends, I'd been introduced to this mythological creature of Hindu origin. Naga, Sanskrit for serpent, were half human, half cobra. The thing standing in front of me wasn't Ted Kaczynski. It wasn't Ted Bundy either. It was something a million times worse. A sort of humanoid snake, wreathed in flames. Now I become death, the destroyer of worlds. Vishnu from the Bhagavad Gita 
words imparted to a prince to impress upon him the importance of fulfilling his duty. The thing standing in front of me wasn't a unabomber, it was a god, and its manifesto which we'd written off as a poorly written dross was scripture. Why me? I asked, the flames crawling from the naga to me. Because your pen is my sword, and you must wield it without question. The flames began eating into my skin. Four, seven, eight, four, seven, four. And, at the moment I accepted my fate, the flames died, and cool air rushed in on my skin. I opened my eyes. The fire in the office was extinguished, the only thing remaining from its hellacious presence being the charred remains of my colleagues. At night, when I'm writing, a puppet pulled by divine strings, I think of my dead colleagues. Why were they killed? And why was I spared? Sue Higgins. She brought scenery to life with an exactness that rivaled a brain surgeon armed with a scalpel. Andy Stevenson, a middle-aged dad with a journalistic motor willing to put in impossibly late nights to get out the latest issue. Gilbert Mitchell, a career journalist who had a universe of connections to the biggest publishers, the most extensive circulations, the best means of getting this new apocalyptic scripture in front of readers. I was just a lowly staff writer, so why me? I heard a slithering noise with which I become all too familiar. Naga, Shiva, the Destroyer, some new god outside a Hindu triumvirate, it didn't matter. The thing was a serpentine agent of darkness, but why was I the one to write humankind's final scripture? Because fear is the best form of motivation, the thing hissed. Your fear is nectar, so bow before me, and write for your life. We go to press at dawn. Well, you heard it here first. When you read these coming words, take them seriously, and when the fire descends from the sky, as it inevitably will, Accept your ascension to a higher purpose, or, alternatively, burn. <laughs>